What's up, beautiful people? My name is Derek Standiford, and I have the honor, the privilege, and the pleasure of interviewing today Miss Raquel Martin. Miss Martin, thank you for doing the interview, one. And two, how are you today, good ma'am? You know, I'm blessed and highly favored. It's Last week was a trying week, but, you know, the sun's shining outside. The Lord woke me up, so I'm I'm trying not to complain. Blessed and highly favored. That's my mantra. That's my mantra. If you were yeah. I'm doing blessed and highly favored. Um, somebody else said that... Uh, I made the wake up list. The God, oh, I made the list. come on, I made the wake up list. I like that. Mm, 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 mm. So, um, here on Solving Sundays, we juxtapose solving the Rubik's Cube to solving the twists and turns of life. And it's an honor to have you on. Um, we met back in 2009 at a Coca Cola convention. Um, we both were honored to be uh, Coca Cola scholars. And it's been an honor to see you do your thing, man. Black Girls Raw. My, my daughter has a woe mentor in you. So, um, oh, I got, you're so lovely. She got somebody to look up to, so I appreciate the service that you're providing to mankind and womankind. Um, so the first step of solving the Rubik's Cube, the first step of solving life is to uh, believe. So what is it that you what is it that you do? Can you can you just tell the tell the people who's watching today what is it that you do? Absolutely. So I'm a labor and employment attorney on the management side, which means I generally represent corporations in all aspects of labor and employment matters. So there's anything from a discrimination or retaliation complaint filed by an employee to a wage and hour complaint where someone says, you know, I wasn't paid everything I was supposed to get paid based on how much I made to non-competitions and restrictive covenants, which means, you know, you signed an agreement that said you wouldn't work for a competitor, but maybe you breached that all the way to regular advice and counseling about should I fire this person? How do I comply with these vacation laws? Um, everything under the sun related to the, like, the employer employee relationship. I touch. Um, I'm act I actually also do like training. So anti-harassment training, disability discrimination training. It's kind of um, even some people I haven't de de dived into this area yet, but um, diversity training for, for corporations. First so, yeah, of all, of different factors in one practice area. First of all, that's amazing. So, you, you know, you like the go to person when it comes to work, anything work related when it comes to work labor laws. You're the go to person for that. I think there's a lot of interest in the kind of law that you do. So uh, thank you. It's for fun. Me. It's, um, it's the juicy. I, I'm a people person and I love solving people problems. And that's all labor and employment. Mm, 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 that was a perfect match. People person, people problems. That's beautiful. It's not like a, uh, it's not like one of them catchphrases that I use for the lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, that's not where I got it from. That's just what it is. We we saw we saw people problems in the workplace. That's it. That's what's up. That's what's up. Um, so um, after we after we know the what, the second step of solving the Rubik's cube, the second step of solving life is to solve your cross. Now, solving your cross means to identify your why, the reasons. Um, why is it? Um, why do you choose the work that you choose to do? Like, what got you carrying the torch that you chose to carry? Oh man, um, I tell people all the time. I did not set out to be, well, I kind of did set out to be a labor and employment, but not like as a child, because I mean, what child knows what an employment attorney is, right? Um, I really decided to be an attorney because I was naturally good at what attorneys are good at, reading, writing, analyzing, um, breaking down a big problem into small parts as concisely as possible so people can understand, right? Um, but I tried to keep my mind open to other professions. But to kind of be honest, it was the lazy thing to do. I was like, well, I'm already good at this. I should just pursue this profession. Why would I be a scientist and beat myself over the head in chemistry and biology classes that I don't like and don't understand when I could be taking legal or philosophy or English or all these different different um, types of courses? And so when I went to law school, um, I had it in mind that I wanted to be an employment attorney because I actually interned in the HR department of um, AutoZone headquarters in Memphis, where I'm from. And mm. the, the head of human resources was a labor and employment attorney. And he, you know, had a great job. He was in a leadership role. He had a wife and like four kids. He seemed to like actually spend time with his family. I was like, okay, so I can have like the money and the comfort with, with like actually a job I enjoy and still like live a life I want to live. So that's kind of put me on that path. And in law school, I had internships in law firms and I, asked, I let them know that I wanted, I was interested in labor and employment. And they were like, oh, my God, it's perfect because we actually need a young attorney to do that type of work. And so the stars kind of aligned. God kind of set it all into place where what I thought I was interested in ended up opening up for me. And so I, I got to pursue that path directly. And for the last almost five years, that's all I've ever practiced. Amazing. First of all, I think it's beautiful that um that, you know, your strengths, you stick to your strengths. It's not lazy at all. I think I think the smartest thing that people can do is identify their strengths. And go in that field, go in that lane. You know, uh, the struggle 
imagine the struggle of going into a, the science fields and you have, you know, that's not your interest. That's not your passion. That's a life. Yeah. Business. So thank you for sharing that to big good people. Um, so after we believe in ourselves and after we solve our cross, step number three of solving the rules, step number three of solving life is to fill in your corners. Now, filling in your corners means to immerse yourself in a positive environment. What kind of friends do you have? So could you describe the environment that you immerse yourself in and the kind of people that you associate with? Um, that's a great question. I think the first thing I associate myself, I associate myself with is people who believe in something. Um, and for me, that's usually faith. So I identify as a Christian woman and, um, mind you, my, my friends do not, are not all Christians, but most of them all have a belief in a faith and a higher purpose that is, that is guiding them. And so when I'm able to, when I'm, we're all facing life's challenges, you know, the first thing we run to, particularly if, if you're a Christian like me, you, you run to the Lord and, you, and you're praying for guidance and like, you know, who do you want me to be in this world? How do you want me to give you glory? How do you want me to, to help my fellow man and, and, and give my life purpose? and allow my life to, to help other people. Mm -hmm. um, and to bring, I tell people all the time, my I don't have a dream job. Like, I enjoy my work. Um, but when people use me, are you passionate about it? Like, absolutely not. Um, I'm passionate about helping other people make their dreams come true. And mm -hmm. it just so happens that I'm able to do that in this role. Usually it's with law students because those are the people that resonate with, with me the most. And mm -hmm. I'm able to help them the most. But I've also, you know, mentored, you know, young people, whether they be high school or college students, they have no interest in the law and being able to kind of use my connections and relationships to do that. And so I surround myself with like-minded people who want this world to be a better place. Um, and hmm. we we support each other. We, you know, we're each other's biggest cheerleaders. Like, yes, ma'am, you did that. Like, super applause, all the emojis, whatever have you. Like, my friends are the people who are going to, to applaud me, but also who are going to, like, help to educate me. I don't know everything. I know I don't know everything. And so having people who, like, can help me to learn about things that I have no idea about. Let's let's take, for example, the, the current Israeli-Palestine conflict. I was very ignorant about that topic until I started conversing with friends who had done work in Palestine, who could actually like live there, and people who are more nuanced in those issues. So surrounded by people who don't, don't just think like me or live the type of life I do, but come from all walks of life. And our main goal is like, one, how do we live our best life and enjoy being, you know, in, in our earthly bodies for as long as we can, but how can we also give back and allow other people to experience that same amount of joy, hope, freedom, joy, and what have you. So those are the type of people I try to surround myself with. I found a lot of them in college, mm -hmm. um, a lot of them in law school. And now as I'm in the, in the professional world, I'm finding a lot out in the community. Ms. Martin, you're a rock star. For real, you're a beast. Uh, <laughs> it's a different kind of person to humble themselves and know that I need smart people in my circle. I tell people all the time, I have no quarrels. I have no shame that everybody in my circle is smarter than me. Every Listen. time I have a conversation with everybody, anybody in my circle, I'm learning new information. It's it's like drinking from a, a fountain of wisdom. It's, it's so crazy. Yeah. We get people who, you know, I'm a big believer in staying in your lane. I stay in my lane and I ask people about lanes and who stay in their lanes. And it's, it's so amazing when you're able to, to all that wisdom together. You know, so thank you for thank you for saying that, good man. Thank Ooh. you for saying that. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, so... After we believe in ourselves, solve our cross, fill in our corners, uh, step number four of solving the Rubik's Cube, step number four of solving life is to take it to the next level. Now, you see on the Rubik's Cube, well, we got the second row of the Rubik's Cube solved. And life to take it to the next level is continuing to grow, continuing to get better. So how do you become a better version of yourself? How do you uh, continuously improve upon um, Roxy, Roxy Martin? So I think it's two things. One is self-reflection. Like you have to be able to look in the mirror every day and like, you know, where did I fall short? Where, what can I do differently? Like, how can I be a better version of myself? Like, how can I learn from the mistakes I've made? Or how can I go after things that I may have been wanted but been too afraid to, to do and seek out? And that's that's the first step for me. And the second step um, is, right, let me go back. What was What was the original question? Uh, step four is how do you grow? How do you continue to get yeah, better? How you grow? Um, the second step, learning, lifelong learning, which we kind of just touched on. Like, I am a big reader. I love books. Like, my goal in my future home is to just have a, a library just where I can just sit with my lamp and my books and
a long time to get out. I used to only read fiction and it took me into law school to be like, OK, you can't learn. I mean, it's great to have an imagination and have a, a place to where I can escape, which I've been doing, which I've been doing since I was a, a reader as a child. But it's like, OK, you're an adult now. You need to really learn about things that you don't know or things you may be interested in. And so it started with reading books on like personal finance and, and real estate and then getting into, OK, let me read about more cultural things or about kind of like, um, you know, how our society is set up about race relations or or things but I'm like I said I'm a faith-based person so reading about different religions and faith and the history behind it and so um that's one way that I'm always growing is just always learning and then always um self-reflecting and also allowing other people to reflect back to me so asking my friends those people in my circle like where can where can I do better like where can I push myself where do you see me like falling short that I may that, that I may be blind to Mm. It's so crazy when you have quality people in your circle, you can humbly come to them and say, "Lo, can you analyze me? Can you do an audit of me and, and fill, fill in the holes for me? Where can I fill in the holes at?" And I've started learning the, pra the practice of delegating to people who know what they're doing, and it means the world. That that investment means the yeah. world. You do things that took you years to do, and just because you sought out some wisdom, they can you know you, you figured out how to do it in, in weeks and days it's so crazy so um thank you for sharing that you are an, a phenomenal interviewer your, your, your answer's on point um your energy is dope i'm great <laughs> to love you good man thank you for that i'm just um, trying to tell the truth <laughs> so, it's possible yes ma'am yes ma'am so um the fifth and the final step of solving the rubik's cube the fifth and the final step of solving your life is to see the bigger picture Seeing a bigger picture simply means to keep your commitment to your commitment. Now, you can see on the root shoe, the cube is officially finally solved. Um, I'm amazed. Let me just stop you and say, I am like completely amazed by you being able to. I've never been able to solve a root cube. And I used to have one as a kid because my mom was actually good at them. Um, and I just could never figure it out. And I used to get so frustrated. I'm like, what is wrong with me? So I'm like sitting here amazed at you right now. Just you just like talking and, and figuring. And so uh mine is blown. Uh we might have to give me a tutorial based on your five steps so I could actually figure out how to solve one. <laughs> what is so crazy? Um, shameless plug, it's so crazy. Um, I actually launched a Ruby Shoe Club. My daughter, she's six, I got six years old, and she learned how to solve a Ruby Shoe last year. Uh, she can solve it in about three minutes now. Um, so I'm actually expanding this opportunity to other people. I just started the Rubik's Cube Club and just made my first post about the Rubik's Cube Club. Maybe 30 okay. minutes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, definitely, you want to get a part of it, we got you. I can, we can set it up. It's so easy. It's matching, it. it's matching colors. How long what? I said, I might have to do that. Again, this is like a lifelong thing for me. I'm almost 30 years old and I have always wanted to be able to do it and I have never been able to do it. Let's check it off the bucket list, good man. Let's do that. Um, yeah, so... Um, keep your commitment to your commitments. How do you keep your commitment to your commitments? Uh, first thing, sorry, my, my partner teases me about this all the time. It's just like, I love lists. And like, I have to like write out, okay, what do I need to do each day? What does my calendar look like? Because if it's not on a calendar, or I, if I hadn't written it on a to-do list, it is not happening. Like I used to be able to remember things. Now we just, we're juggling too much as young adults. Like I'm not a parent. Luckily I don't have, I don't wear that hat, but even being an attorney, being a daughter, being a sister, being a partner, being a friend, like those are just so many different hats where like, if you want to keep keep your commitments to your commitments is about like writing it down, setting reminders, and then just following through. Like don't do things that you don't care about because those are the quickest things that you're going to be like, Oh, whatever. I just said yes to somebody. So I didn't hurt their feelings. And so, um, it was about, I where I'm like, why are you doing the things you're doing? Are you doing it for applause? Are you doing it for clout? Are you doing it to look good? And if and all of those negative reasons, I was like, okay, it's time to eliminate it. Like, what are you doing to one, bring yourself happiness? What are you doing to serve your community? What are you doing to bring God glory? Like all those things kind of have to align. And that's when I say, okay, I'm committed to, to making this happen. I'm committed to leading this organization. I'm committed to being a volunteer. I'm committed to doing this interview like those. And so when I'm doing things that I actually care about that are important to me and that impact people, it's easy for me to be like, one, I'm gonna write it down on my calendar. I'm gonna put it on my to-do list, and then I'm gonna follow through. So it, it, it's that simple. Write it down. Put it, write it down. Add some reminders if you if you know you got too much going on, and only do what you really want to do. Don't let people, you know, monopolize your time and guilt you into doing things. I think we have to just start being a lot more honest first with ourselves, and then with other people. Like you owe people your honesty and transparency because if you're not if you're doing something you don't want to do, like you, it's not a pleasurable experience for you or anyone involved. Like, why do that? Somebody else really does want that opportunity. Somebody wants to be in that spot. So give it to them. 
Come on, come on, Miss Martin. Come on, Miss Martin. Thank you for the blessing. Uh, I want to say two things. So TD Jakes, um, he has this sermon about how he can't overcommit himself to too many things. He said, I can't be a pastor of two churches. It takes so much time for me to be an effective pastor at this church. So how am I going to be an effective pastor at two churches? So you can't be everybody's friend. You can't let everybody take your time. It's just not possible. You got to be you got to be limited with who you and what you and how you do things because it, it's only 24 hours in the day. Yeah. Second thing is Simon um, Simon Sinek, uh, start with why. He has this thing about making these lists. And he talks about when you cross things off these lists, you get this dopamine release. Oh, it feels so good. It feels so good. <laughs> I'm a list person. I list, I write lists down, and when I cross them off, I, you know, oh man, I feel good. I do things and then write it on the list just to cross it off. Yeah, and, me, also <laughs> me. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you've been dropping jewels. Um, I think you're very dope. Thank you for the blessings. So, since we have officially solved our Rubik's shoe, that's a bonus step. The bonus step of solving the Rubik's shoe. Um, have you ever seen somebody take the stickers off the Rubik's shoe? You know, and um. um when you do, if you take the stickers off the Rubik's Cube, you mess it up. The shortcut in life is if you take the stickers off life, you ruin your life. So while we got you here, we got to take advantage of the wisdom that you bring into the stage. Is it possible? Can you leave us with some last remarks, some words of wisdom that you want to leave us with, ma'am? Oh, my goodness. Um, just stay true to yourself and who you want to be. Like, really. And sometimes that's a hard question to answer. I think. Um, I tell people all the time, people didn't tell me about like the quarter life crisis. Like, and what I, what I, what I define as like the quarter life crisis between the ages of like 25 and 30, where it's like, you went to college, you, uh, you went to grad school, you, you started the business, you got the dream job. And then it's like, okay, what next? And like, nobody prepares you for the fact that you have, you know, 50, 60, 70 more years ago. And so then we freak out like, okay, what is my purpose in the world? Because like, okay, yeah, I'm glad I did this. I even like doing it, but like, is that it? Like what, what else? And so really sitting down with yourself and being like, okay, what do I want? What will, what will bring me joy? How can I also do something that positively, positively impacts other people? Um, and once you sit down with yourself, have those conversations, if you need to have it with a therapist, I can't advocate mental health advocacy enough. Um, mm -hmm. Or with a partner or a trusted friend, and then go out and do it. As scary as it may be, um, I, when we started the call, I'm like, it's been it's it's been a crazy time for you to ask me these questions because for like maybe the third time in the last three years, I'm reevaluating. Like, okay, mm -hmm. what do I want? Yes, I'm where I am right now as a single person with only like a partner and no kids is great. But what does my life look like with a husband and kids? What does my life look like, you know, um, as a soccer mom or what or whatever have you? When I started to put on new hats, I recognized that like the life I live now is not conducive to the life I want to live in those worlds. Um, and so just just stay true to what you want. You don't owe anybody anything. You don't have to be anything for anybody but yourself and your creator. Um, and, and believe that and be be happy in that because the people that love you and support you, those those people in your um, step two of the Rubik's Cube, uh, they're going to rock you and they're going to give you the support you need to, to thrive and live the life you want. And so, um, yeah, and the, the only words of reason, just stay true to yourself, be good to yourself, show yourself grace and, and enjoy the journey. Ms. Martin, it has been an honor, a privilege, and a pleasure to talk to you. When I tell you, you're a rock star. You're a rock star, hands down. Um, hey. By the company I keep, you were out here doing the same thing. I'm so proud. We met so many amazing people. You know, it's been 12 years since that, since we all met, and so many great people. I love to see what you guys are doing. I also love to see things like being a father and having your six year old solve a Rubik's Cube in three minutes. That's so dope. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, yeah. It's, 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 you're telling people, y'all, you got to plant those seeds early because I don't know about for you, but um, for me. I know, I, you know, I, I dropped out of school and had my little rough period, but I was always connected to Coach Scholars in a way where I don't want to, I don't want to be, I don't want to be the person to let down the, the, the family of the Coach Scholars. And I wanted to kind of prove myself, do something for myself. So it's an honor to be a part of such prestigious individuals. Thank y'all for being so dope. Um, top more heart to the bottom of my soul. Thank you. If you can stay on, if you can stay on. But those of y'all who are watching, thank y'all for tuning in for Solving Sundays. Um, from the top of my heart to the bottom of my soul, it has been an honor to serve as y'all host of Solving Sundays. Next week, before your day, I'm not doing a Solving Sundays next Sunday. I'm gonna let y'all see. No, I'm, I'm sorry, on the 30th. On the 30th. Next week, we got Camille Lewis with Earth Garden. I do apologize. Next week, we got uh, Camille Lewis with Earth Garden. For Memorial Day, we will not be on the Solving Sundays. Um, Roxy, stay on for a hazard. Gotcha. I'll be great like the lakes, be blessed like a sneeze. Peace and blessings. Love and light.